Hey guys, how you doing? It's Brad with atrepodcast.com. All things real estate. Really great show for you today. Really great guest, Charles Benton. Now, Charles Benton is a prominent figure in the real estate scene in the greater Atlanta area. He began his career as a licensed real estate agent in 2006 after serving five years in the United States Navy as a submariner on the USS Houston SSN 713. Now, he reached over $50 million in sales in his first three years in business. Charles has been presented with multiple awards and honors, including the REMAX Rookie of the Year in 2006, Short Sale and Foreclosure, Resource Certification, HUD Certification, Certified Distressed Property Expert Certification, and Platinum and Million Dollar Club Award winner. Now, in November of 2019, Charles and a handful of agents joined First Class Real Estate. He's rapidly grown to six locations covering over three states and has hired over 100 agents just in 2020. Then he started his own mortgage company called Colony Mortgage in 2020 and uh, opened it up in Florida as well. First Class Real Estate, well, now Charles is the very first franchisee. Is that correct, Charles? Yep, first area rep too, yep. Absolutely amazing, welcome. And I'd like to first just say thank you so much for your service. Uh, you're, you're incredible, especially to live with a bunch of people on a submarine <laughs> for five years. No problem. I don't know how you did it, but thank you very much for your service. We're, we're, it's an honor to have you. Thanks. Charles, you know, you have a really impressive resume and I don't know how many people actually talk to you about this, but in, in looking, I've been in the business for 23 years. So in actually looking at when you got into real estate in 2006, you know, that was a hell of a year. It was a great year in real estate. You probably were, you know, just hitting it out of the park. And then one day you wake up two day, two years after you've been in the business and bam, your phone stops ringing. And I could, I bet you that's where you got a lot of your, your foreclosure and short sale expertise. Am I wrong? You almost had to, you're right to make it back then. I remember those days. Scary times, but, you know, good for you. You know, most agents uh, pivoted their way right out of the business. And it sounds like you launched your way, you know, right into success. So when COVID hit this, you know, last year, how did that affect your real estate business? And, and, and how did you pivot in order to uh, do better? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And what's crazy about it is when it hit, I, I not necessarily panic. I was like, oh, this is an, another curveball. You know, I've, I've gone, I've gone through the, through been, the foreclosure route and, and now I have this, but what it really ended up doing is, is teaching kind of me how to be more virtual, right? A, a for real estate sales, but also B for, for, for growth, coaching, um, and, and right? just planning ahead. And, and it actually probably ended up being a great thing for me because I, it did kind of switch my business around, um, to, to do that way. So mm-hmm. It, it, it was it was something different than what I've experienced, but you know I'm I'm kind of not glad that it happened, but it's neat. Yeah, that I know it's been it's woken us up though, hasn't it? It sure has. The whole virtual world, yeah. It sure has. Look, just just the podcast in itself, we're now you know so much more comfortable with doing things on Zoom or other platforms, which it makes it nice. Absolutely. You know, Charles, as I I told you in our pre-interview that this um. This podcast is generally for newer agents as well as, you know, buyers and sellers all over the United States. Um, what advice, you know, could a guy like you give to someone who's thinking of getting into real estate, whether it be in the Atlanta or Florida area or actually anywhere in the United States? What advice could you give them? Yeah, and I get to ask that a lot because uh, in our brokers, when we recruit, we do bring on a lot of new agents mm-hmm. and, and, and they'll ask me like, Hey, you know, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And, and the number one thing I tell them is consistency. Yes. You, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta treat this as a career job and not just, Oh, I don't have to go in today or, or I'll just work from home because right. it, even if that's what you want to do, you gotta be consistent. That's right. And, and, and you gotta treat this as a job and not necessarily that. So that's that's the best advice I feel like I could give agents that's is great. consistency. That's great advice. And you know, here's the thing. We've all learned now that we can work at home and that's great. However, there's nothing like going into the office 
and, and, and feeling that energy and hearing about someone say, yeah, I'm getting a listing, you know, over on so-and-so street and you go, ding, 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 wait a second, you have a listing coming out and then who can you, you know, get to, to show. And if they're not in the office, right. You don't hear that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and see too, in real estate, I tell people this is it, it can be a lonely, lonely industry. Yes. You know, it, and again, not going to office, not collaborating, masterminding, uh, especially for new agents, you, you lose a lot of that education. That's true. So, I, I, you know, work, working from home, I've never really been able to do it. Um, you know, so it's tough. I, this was a tough year oh, at home, wasn't it? And I tell you what, it's it was cabin fever for a little bit. And I said, all right, I, I got to get back to the yeah, office. That's right. I, you know, I, I work between my house and my office and it's great. I, I can only handle so much being at home. Love the family, but Love that yeah. office. Um, hey, Charles, how did you deal living on a submarine? <laughs> well, what's funny is that, and I know you can't tell me, I'm six foot four. So everyone's always like, how did you fit on it? How could you do it? Yeah. I, I walked around like this a lot, but- You want to bump you know, that head, huh? Getting my head hit and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it, it was something that, um, you know, I went to North Georgia Military College. So I was, I was going into military regardless, but- submarines just kind of happened right. and uh really loved it i mean i, I really enjoyed it and Good. got to see a lot of the world um at the same time but i, I do get asked that a lot like how did you do it and like yeah. I said, you can't tell when i'm just sitting here but people are like what the heck and you were underwater right for five years or for a long long time oh yeah i, I was out to sea quite a bit no oh, that's good so you so you, so you were down and then you guys would come back up and because I mean that's got to be difficult a little bit of an adjustment period just not being able to get fresh air right yeah I mean it, after a while you don't realize it but you know you'll stay underwater 45 60 days come up grab some air you know pull some emails in yeah so do you get no emails or anything back then not until you not to surface and, and pull your antenna up and pull them in so every time we knew we were about to put that antenna up everyone's running to their computer. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the ones, the emails that we've, that we've typed up the whole time yeah. and received. So it's a, it was a big deal. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, Charles, what do you think has added to you being such a successful agent? So, I mean, I, you know, I understand we all market and we do things. Was, was part of living on a submarine, uh, did that prepare you for, for anything to do with sales or what is it that, today is a reason why you feel or the biggest reason why you feel you're so successful yeah I, I think some of it does have have to do with being in the military and, and on a submarine and a lot of it is um just discipline and, and again i bring the word consistency again because it that, that to me is discipline as well mm -hmm. so you know being able to to regiment and and just stay with something and and not giving up on it um and and, and Again, the work ethic was there. Charles, what's an average morning for you? You know, let's just take this morning, for example. I, I typically will wake up around 6.30 or so, uh, depending on what day of the week it is, hit the gym for a little bit mm -hmm. and, and, and stroll into, um, into the office. I mean, I, I come to the office every single day. And I'll, even with COVID, a lot of our agents come in and we'll have yeah. trainings, you know, so I get, to, I get to socialize a little bit and, and then... Um, and then just just get to the grind that's you great know? that's great and what do you do for marketing how do you market yourself what do you find works best you know so i me personally i've been out of production for about two years now but we do a lot of marketing for our agents for the brokerage and stuff like that and and, and it, it really depends obviously we know how big social media is yeah and, and, and obviously the internet so we're, we've gotten really heavy into both of those okay um you know I, I would say some of those those attributes there are our number our number one marketing um stuff and, and then you know I, I grew up here in Atlanta so I've, I've been around and 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 had a decent client base so we, we will kind of you know circle circle prospect to those I have a little cousin who lives in Atlanta he okay. uh, he's uh filming that tv show um he's on uh star girl okay so he plays our man his name's cameron and he lives out in atlanta filming and loves it out there we have so many studios now here like it's, yeah. it's wild how the movies have taken off 
They're moving big. They're moving big. But uh, he tells me that Atlanta is a great, great city. So uh, if he's ever going to buy out there, I'll have to send him your way. Yeah, please do. We'll help him. Definitely. So how should an agent be preparing for a successful 2021? I understand that. Now, keep in mind, guys, if you're listening to this, you're probably listening to it at the end of May. Um, but it is March for us right now. So, Charles, if someone is in May, they're a new agent, they're ready to start out that second half. And what would you suggest as a, you know, as a you know yeah. So the, the first thing I would tell them is go pick the brain of every seasoned agent right. in the office. And, and, and even at other companies, a, 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 any seasoned agent, you know, you're going to get something from them guaranteed. That's right. And then I would say, take all that, put it together, a business plan. What fit, what suits you the best. That's great. You know, a lot of newer agents, and don't be afraid to, and don't be afraid to, to pivot and find out what works for you. Right. Exactly. Just it, it. because you, you, you hear something that you don't have to stick with it. So do you, did you know, so Charles, when I got into the business in 1997, I, uh, I called up, uh, I went and I started asking, we didn't even have the internet then for like, it was just coming out. So no one really used it. And, and so I said, I was walking around my office and I said, Hey, uh, who are the best agents? In, in the business, not only p at my office, but all over the San Fernando Valley in LA. So I got a list of agents and I just started calling them and I said, hi, you don't know me, but my name is Brad uh, Roth and I'm in real estate and I'd like to take you to lunch. And I started taking all the top agents to lunch with nickels, dimes and quarters because I was broke. <laughs> um, but, and they would say, no, 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 let me pay. And I'd say, absolutely not, please. I know it's embarrassing that I have to count out nickels, dimes, and quarters right now for you to sit here. It's even more embarrassing for me to do it, but I got to tell you, I want to earn the right to ask you any question I have. Mm -hmm. And the way I feel now, I promise you, it's only going to turn into resiliency and grit. Yep. And uh, that, that's how I, I earn my chops. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best thing you could have done. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was paying for my suits at thrift stores that cost $3. I slicked my hair back like Guido. And I, uh, I just, you know, I always knew I was one deal away from a good mood, you know? You know it, 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 so when I got out of the military and I said, in real estate, I went and interviewed with Remax. Right. And back then you'd have like a big formal interview and yeah. I, I'd never bought a suit before. So yeah. I'm, I'm going and buying a suit at men's warehouse. And getting, That's right. Getting, they, getting, they got good suits. And I remember I walked into the interview. They're like, what the heck is he wearing? You're like, hey, again, and look at you today, right? <laughs> Charles, you know, if you were to give uh, a seller, a seller's listening to you right now and they're thinking about selling their house, what advice could you give them to help them in the selling process? You know, there's really two things from it. And, and obviously if, if they didn't refi because the rates have been fantastic, yeah, right? but if, if now they're in position, they're most likely have a lot of equity is is really capitalizing that right now because be, being a seller's market, especially in Atlanta, you you, you really can capitalize. And uh, I, I am a big big believer in picking the right agent, right? But the right agent for what 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 their goal is, you know. Every single seller or buyer has a different recipe for success and you've got to get that agent who knows how to figure out what your recipe is mm -hmm. make that award-winning meal yep that's exactly right charles let me ask you if you were marty from back to the future and you got in that delorean hopped in what would old charles come back and tell young charles man that's a tough question so i, I would probably take it all the way back to probably my first year. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it was amazing market back 2006, seven. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I really did well with it. Um, but I think I would have also taken a lot of time. It was just so much business. You're just turning and burning, really focused more on, on long-term relationships, not, not just that deal. You know, I, I was focused as a young guy. I was only 26 years old. That's all I cared about. Next deal, next deal. And, and I would have looked back at that and been like, you know, I really, you know, that, that was great, but I should have done this. You want to build relationships is what you're saying. Absolutely. You're setting yourself up for, for, for many more deals. Yeah. Everybody, you, everybody, when you get your license, I tell new agents all the time, I say, you know, 
that buyer you just got from an open house that bought a $200,000 house in three years, they're going to be a seller. They're going to sell that house for 500,000 and they're going to buy something from you for eight. Yep. It's, and you can turn those people around every few years. And then their family, then you yeah. get it. I mean, it's, right. it's and their friends and their, mm -hmm. their coworkers, Charles, who has been your biggest influence in real estate? So, like I said, when I got in, I went to Remax. I, I, I was an agent probably about four or five months. And I, I happened to play golf with an agent there. I didn't realize who he was, but he was one of the largest REO agents yeah. around. And it, for some reason, him and I hit it off. He's like, dude, you got to come join my team. I, I really could use you. I was like, well, what would I be doing? He's like, well, you can just work on my buyers. I was like, well, okay. He's like, hey, I just forwarded the sign calls to you, so be ready. Oh, man, my phone. The, Never the, stopped ringing, huh? Oh, it was nuts. I was like, this guy didn't really warn me, but all right, let's get it. And it's good because then it was in a different name, the buyers. <laughs> For the agents, I, get it. I do a lot of REOs as well. Um, so, so Charles, what, do you have any wild stories? What's the wildest? I know we all have some wild stories from, from real estate. Um, any, anything uh, shocking that's ever happened when you're showing a house or listing a house you can think of? You know, probably the, the, the it, and this, this was a, just a few years ago. Uh, it wasn't the best neighborhood, but it was with, with two investors yeah. and, and we went this property. It was supposed to be vacant. Well, I don't know if it was a homeowner or if it was, you know, just that, but they had two pit bulls in there. So we walk in, we're just talking, boom, all of a sudden they come flying at us. Well, well, one of the guys runs out, he closes the door on me and the other guy. <laughs> we're, we're stuck in there. Thank oh, God. Yeah, fire with him around. Oh man, thank God the the the, the individual was there, the homeowner would not came out and you know they called talks. them off yeah oh i was like well there yeah that would that would have been it oh man and that's so we always joke charles in la um but we call them broker eating dogs and i'm sure you guys do the same thing out yep. there that's that's we can handle pretty much anything but yep. dogs are just like oh no they're coming yeah i tell you what it, 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 that same day though we were walking around the outside and I had dress shoes on and, and you know, they weren't the tie kind, you know, kind of. The yeah, yeah, I get it. it. And it was muddy and I stepped in it. Both of them stuck in there. I walk out in just my socks. I was like, I got to go home, man. This day That's is it. just out of control. This uh, is nuts. I, I am out of here. Yeah. That's a great story. So Charles, <laughs> let me ask, how can a buyer or seller get a hold of you if they're, they're looking to buy or sell real estate in the Atlanta area, or if maybe someone would like to join, uh, you know, you're, you're at first class, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. They, they can just go to firstclassga.com uh, or first class premier group. That's, that's also us. Uh, and again, you can find me on Facebook, message me, uh, you know, Charles Benton, absolutely get a hold of me that way. And, um, you what's, know, we'll, what's your telephone number? Can someone call or text? Absolutely. Yes. It's 770-549-9465. Great. And tell me a little bit, uh, you know, normally I ask that question last, but I, I was just thinking, you know, we didn't even touch on, tell me a little bit, you own the um, real estate company first class or you're a franchisee. Uh, tell me about your mortgage company colony. Yeah. So uh, like I said, when I, when I've got, gotten to the kind of the franchise game is what I call it. Um, it that does nine. And I, I've luckily since then I've opened up nine franchises. And once I, once I've done that, I, I realized that, Hey, you know, we got different lenders for each, each for yeah, it's good money franchise. and all that. Right. I, um, I decided to go ahead and, and op open that up. Um, and, and it's, it's been huge. Um, you know, it's really great for agents because they, they do feel like it's their mortgage company. That's cool. Um, and, and the way I have it set up is it's actually you it's in shares. So some of our agents buy into it and own shares of the mortgage company to help push business and so That's forth. Great. So, it's been huge um, to, to give back to them and, and for them to help them grow and, and yeah. do as well. They're looking so. out for their future as well. And it, and it really helps them actually stay with you. Yeah. Uh, Char Charles, can you give out your email as well in case anyone is interested maybe in joining your, your mortgage company or your real estate company, or just has any questions in general about Atlanta real estate? Uh, what's your email? 
Yeah, it's, so it's charles.benton at firstclassagents.com. So that's Benton as B-E-N-T-O-N. Yep, Charles Benton. Excellent. And guys, if you like what you're hearing and you haven't seen Charles's good looking face, you can see him, all six foot four of him on YouTube at ATRE Podcast. You can also go to atrepodcast.com and you can sign up for my five free secrets, my real estate mastery course. And when you sign up, you'll also get a free handbook. Here's how it looks. Nice. And you'll be able to get coached by me. You can also sign up for one free coaching session at atrepodcast.com. But make sure you go to YouTube and look at ATRE Podcast. Or if you're on YouTube now and you just want to do the audio, you can go to any major podcast and just type in all things real estate with Brad Roth. And that's Apple iTunes, Spotify, or anything else. And in the meantime, if you're looking for any real estate in Atlanta, call or email Charles. He's amazing. He does a great job. His clients seem to love him. And you know what? He supported our country for five years. So I say that now it's our turn to say thank you and support him. Yep. We're here to serve. So if you're looking at Atlanta, we got you. It was a pleasure having you. And, and thank you so much for everything you've done for our country. Yeah, I appreciate it, Fred. And that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, many of my podcast listeners have become my coaching clients. If you'd like to be a coaching client, go to my website at www.atrepodcast.com and sign up for your free 30-minute coaching evaluation at www.atrepodcast.com. And as my dad would always say, have an attitude of gratitude.